Hi, my name is Brad Turnblum. I'm a professional freestyle jet skier. Um, been doing it for about 20 years now, and now I'm going to be releasing a few videos here and there, some tricks and tips, basically starting from the beginning on how to use ride a stand-up jet ski. Um, I'm going to kind of bring you through my 1997 Yamaha Superjet here and give you an idea of how everything functions, how it works, and then we'll bring it out to the water, give you some basic tips on how to do it and how to do it without falling constantly and wearing yourself out. There's some pretty cool little tips that I can share that will help speed up your learning your learning curve and kind of get you going a lot quicker. So starting with the basic controls of a stand-up jet ski, most of them are going to have a trigger throttle. The main thing there is you're going to want to put fin one finger on the throttle only. If you start putting two or three fingers on it, as soon as you hit the throttle and lean back, you're going to get a handful and you're going to get shot right off the back. So one finger only is a great tip for starters and uh, I think that carries over to pretty much everything. You won't ever want to have one finger on there. The start stop, there's a red button on the back to stop, green button on the top to get started to start it. You're going to push the green button, hold it down and feather the throttle a little bit until it's up and running and then let go of the green button and you're off going. In some cases you'll have to keep giving a little bit of throttle input to keep the engine running depending on how it's tuned and where the idle is at. Another thing is most of the watercraft are going to have a lanyard. You're going to want to have that attached around your wrist or some of them have a clip. You can clip to your life jacket but you want to use this if it has it. If you fall off, pulls out, shuts the engine off so it doesn't take off without you. On some older models, um, Kawasaki's in sp um, particular, they don't have lanyards and when you fall on those, they're supposed to just go in a big circle. So a big thing with that is you fall off. Don't try and swim after it. If it's still running, it should go in a big circle. So anticipate where is the circle going to come to. That's something I've seen so many times as someone go out there on the water. They fall off and they're swimming in a circle after it and they can't catch it. So just hang back, watch it make a circle and move where it's going to, not where it's going. So lanyard, take the little fork and you just plug it in under the button and then you're back up and going again. So here's your basic controls. So when you hop on one of these and you start going, probably your easiest way to do it is going to be off of a shore and basically pop one knee on the tray, start it up and just blast off giving it throttle and ride around on your knees. The downside to that is if you fall out in the middle and you don't know how to get on any other way, you're kind of stuck. So keep in mind that once you fall, you're going to have to start out the good old fashioned way, which is going to be on your stomach. To turn one of these things, it's not just leaning, it's not just turning the bars, it's a little bit of everything. So on, on any watercraft with a jet, you have to give throttle input to turn. So it's going to be on a stand up, you're going to lean the ski over a little bit, you're going to turn the bars, give throttle, all those three things are making it turn. And the best way to learn that is really just going to be riding around on your knees and getting a feel for it before you try and stand up. It's a lot harder than you think it's going to be, but it's a ton of fun and that's what makes it so rewarding when you start figuring it out and you start actually making that high speed turn one time, you know, and it's just so rewarding. And that's really what made me fall in love with stand-ups in the first place. Uh, my first ever stand-up I ever got on was a, uh, I think it was a Cowie 550. And I didn't know anything about them. A friend brought it out. I think I was 14, 15 years old. And he told me to give it a shot. So I hopped on it. I went wide open, turned the bars, tried to turn, and just flew off that thing and wadded up, cartwheeled across the water. And I think a month later I had one, I just had to have it. I was immediately hooked because it was really hard, it was a challenge, and it was, it was just fun blasting across the water at high speeds. So that's kind of how I got started into it. I've been doing it ever since. So with these, any of the Yamahas, you're gonna have to mix the oil in with the gas beforehand. I usually do 40 to one. I think Yamaha recommends 50 to one. I think you'll be in pretty good shape either way. But you're gonna pre-mix the oil into your gas. So if you have a five gallon jug of gas, you're gonna to wanna to put 16 ounces of two stroke oil into that jug, shake it up, and then dump it in the fill. Fills up front here. And another good tip here is that when you're near the shore, if it's shallow, you don't wanna be starting the engine or pushing the back of the jet ski down into the ground because that's a good way to suck up rocks 
through the impeller, it can jam the impeller, can break your mid shaft, ruin your impeller, ruin your pump, cause a lot of damage. So make sure you're in deep enough water where you're not gonna be at risk of sucking up a rock. One of the biggest tips for getting up on the water on one of these stand-ups is going to be speed. So speed is your friend. The faster you go, the more stable it is, and the faster you go, the easier it is. It's kind of counterintuitive because you normally think, hey, going slow is really easy, um, and it's not as scary, but think about a bicycle. If you're trying to ride a bike at one mile per hour, it's really wobbly and feels like you're gonna fall over. It's very similar on one of these, and the main reason why they're unstable with these is because they sink. The back end of the jet ski is just gonna be sinking into the water if you're not on plane. So the faster you go, the more you're gonna get up on plane and actually be able to ride it around without just doing a wheelie and tipping over and falling. So speed is your friend um, and stay out of the shallows. Another kind of big tip I have is if you're starting off in the water, you're gonna start off laying down. So you're gonna pull yourself up, up. You're gonna pull yourself up on the back and guys or girls, make sure you pull, pull your privates up on top of the tray because if you hang down below and start it, you're gonna get a nice blast in your uh, crotch and it does not feel good for anyone. So that's what I always tell people also when they get them for the first time is make sure you tuck your privates up on top of the tray there so you're not gonna get hit. Very important. Another thing we have on these is when they're completely stock, they'll have a siphon bilge pump. So these, when you're falling over and tipping, they're gonna be taking some water into the engine compartment and to get it out, the stock ones have a siphon bilge pump. So when you're riding around normally, it will just keep pumping the water out as you ride. So it's not a huge concern unless you're sitting in one place for a long time. But a lot of people with these will modify them to where they don't have that siphon bilge anymore because they're running two cooling lines or whatever the factor may be. But if that's the case, a lot of these stand-ups are gonna have an electric bilge pump on a switch. So whatever you have or whatever you're riding, if it's a friend's and they're letting you ride it, make sure it either has the factory bilge pump or you know where the, the switch is for the electric bilge pump and that you're utilizing it because you need to keep water out of the engine bay because that can cause the engine to lock up if you suck water into the engine or it can actually, if you could do it bad enough, you can sink the jet ski and it'll just be bobbing from the back. So we want to avoid that. We want to go out and have a good time for our first day and uh, not lose it and ruin, ruin your engine. So and those are kind of, the, kind of the basics I usually share with everyone before I let them hop on a ski. I have some pretty good tips. I've, I've gotten people up pretty quickly. So now we can kind of go into, you know, what are you gonna do to actually get up on this thing, right? You know, we've talked about fundamentally how it works, start, stop, switch, the throttle and the pump and all of that and how it all works and how the steering relates to the pump and the, the leaning and all of that. So now we're going to kind of go over starting from a stop out in the middle of the water and then also kind of like some tricks to make it easier to go from laying down to up on your feet. And it's a little tricky, but it'll wear you out a lot less if you kind of get this fundamental idea down. And what that is, so if you start off Especially for bigger people, you know, I'm so skinny that I can hop up and I have pretty good balance. I've been doing this a long time. I can just hop up onto my knees and start it and I can kind of balance it and go. Most people are not going to be able to do that. So best way to start is like we talked about, you pull up, you're going to lay here on your stomach. You're going to hold the start button, give it a little gas till she's running. Then once you start going, get going a little bit faster, almost like it's on plane, just laying down like this and get going and you're going to get going. And then what you're gonna do is get yourself ready to pop up. So kind of like surfing where you pop up quick, you're gonna be going and then just lift off the throttle really quick. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna make the jet ski wanna slow down and you're naturally gonna have that momentum of your body pushing towards the handlebars. And that split second moment is your opportunity to pop yourself up on your knees, okay? So you're gonna go from this, you're gonna be going, and then you lift, and then that forward momentum of slowing down, you're gonna pull your knees up, and then get back on the throttle as soon as possible. Because if you wait too long, you're gonna drop back down in the water and fall over. But it's that forward deceleration that's gonna actually assist you in getting up into the tray up on your knees. And then from there, you can ride around, 
get a feel for it, throttle, steering, leaning, all of that, just down on your knees. Now, what's gonna happen is you're gonna start riding on your knees, and when you start getting really on plane, the nose of the jet ski is just gonna start to go up and down, and it's almost impossible to go any faster because of that. The reason why that's happening is because your weight is too far back. And when you're standing, your weight's gonna be way further forward because it's just the natural way you're standing. So if you wanna get comfortable riding around on your knees, what you wanna do is scoop yourself all the way forward in the tray. And if it's still hopping, you're actually gonna to wanna to try and lean forward to counteract it and push the nose of that thing back down. And that same fundamental idea is gonna transition um, to standing as well. Once you're standing up, you're gonna have the same thing. Most people are nervous. They crouch down, they're leaning back, and the nose of the ski is just going to start bouncing. And so many people I hear complain about this after riding for their first day, their first week, first month, and they say, hey, I need, I need a longer ride plate, I need this, what modifications can I do, I can't ride this thing. And I'm telling you, you know, for the most part, it's not the, it's not the jet ski, it's not your ride plate, it's the way you're riding it. Now, a ride, longer ride plate does make a big difference, but if you're just not riding it right, that's gonna make it hop. So, once you get comfortable enough riding around on your knees and you're up on your feet, you wanna put one foot in the back to one side. So I go my right foot back out and my other foot up to the opposite side. So, right foot's back to the right, left foot's up all the way to the left. So you have an, a wide stance as possible you have this foot up front, and what this foot up front's doing, it's allowing you to push down on the front, towards the front of the jet ski. And what that does, that's gonna push the nose of the ski down as well. If you're still hopping, lean forward over the bars, your head, your chest. Get your weight forward and get the front of that thing down. That's really gonna help you progress and get past that stage where you're just kind of stuck hopping. And, you, and when you're hopping, then you start going back and forth, and then you just get chucked off the jet ski. So those are some really simple tips that I see over and over people complaining about and asking for help with is, you know, why is it hop so bad? What modifications should I do? You know, if you're a, a big dude, you know, 250, 250 pounds or so, I mean, yeah, a longer right plate most definitely is going to help you. But the point is that your body position makes a massive difference in the way that these handle and it makes it rideable versus not rideable regardless of your size. So that's kind of a, a cool one that I like to share. <clears throat> so going into like more, more advanced steering when, it's, when you're standing up, different stand-ups handle differently. So for instance, if you're on something like an SXR, you don't really need to lift off the throttle to initiate turns. You can kind of just stay on it and just turn the bars. I'm not a big SXR rider, but from my experience riding them, that's kind of how they, how they are. On something like a Superjet, or let's say like a 550, um, even like a you know Kawasaki 650, something like that, they ride a little different where, from what I found is it, initiating a, a kind of a sharper turn, it's better to actually lift off the throttle a little bit, get your weight forward, start to lean and turn the bars, and then get back on it and power through the turn. Um, that's another thing too is, there's a saying that I've always had with riding these, and it's when in doubt, throttle out. There's almost nothing you can't throttle your way out of on these. If you keep that in your head, and you build your confidence up, you won't fall that much. You, you know, if you're falling over, you lean too far, turn the bars all the way and just hammer down. And if you lay into the throttle and you turn into your fall, most of the times you can ride out of that. So keep that in your mind that, oh, I leaned, I leaned too far and you just fall in the water. Don't give up. Keep those bars cranked and, and just pin it. And you'll be surprised what you can pull out of. I pulled out of a lot of crazy stuff and uh, you just have to have the right mindset and that confidence, you know. Uh, another thing when it comes to learning more advanced techniques or even when you're just starting out is most people's tendency is going to be to anything goes wrong they just jump off the back or jump off the side and that's a good way to, to stay safe 
and you know not bang up your shins or whatever it may be but you're gonna get really tired you're gonna keep swimming back to the jet ski over and over again and that's gonna be wearing you out because you you keep having to climb on the back start from scratch from scratch and just keep keep you know starting the process over which wears you out so fast so you would be surprised if you don't let go of the jet ski how uh, how infrequently you will get hurt and how quickly you can just pop yourself right back into the tray and keep on going for instance if i'm riding and i'm going kind of fast right and i hit hit uh, some boat chop a little crooked i get tossed and i start losing my my balance in many cases i'll just fall off the side hang on don't let go and in most cases by the time you're done falling the jet ski will actually just pull you right back in you'll be laying in the tray again uh, it's hard to explain but the point is if you don't let go you just hold on in many cases you're going to stay with it you're going to be fine and you'll end up back in the tray so do this at your own risk but i never let go unless i'm going to be running into the shore maybe i'll ditch it but i don't let go of the jet ski ever i just hold on to it and I don't really have any injuries to show from that. So something to be said about that, you're going to save a ton of energy by just hanging on and then you get right back to it and keep on going. So those are kind of some basic fundamentals of riding and learning and kind of trying to progress on a stand-up jet ski like this one. So you know, when you're all done for the day, Basically, there's not much maintenance to be done on these. If you're riding in salt water or brackish water, obviously that changes. You're gonna wanna do really substantial flushes to the entire cooling system. You're gonna wanna wash everything off as much as possible. <clears throat> See, I'm a freshwater rider, so I don't worry about that stuff. But really, the only things you need to do as far as maintenance after each ride, um, there's two main things. One is gonna be clearing out your water box. So the water box acts like a muffler. It's after your pipe and it has water in it for while you're riding and that keeps the noise level down. And it also acts as a water trap so that when you're sitting in the water, the water doesn't run up the exhaust pipe all the way back into your engine and hydrolock your engine. So it has two purposes actually. But once you're done riding, what you wanna do is get your jet ski out of the water so it'll be at the launch if it's in your truck bed, on your hitch hauler, on your trailer. Pull out of the water, fire it up, and just go off and on the throttle, hit that rev limiter over and over again for about, you know, maybe 10 seconds, 10, 15 seconds. And when you're hitting the rev limiter and changing the RPM really fast, what it's doing is it's just shooting a lot of the water out. You're never going to get all of it out, especially on like an OEM water box. I don't think you can get all of the water out, but you don't want it full. So you want to run the water out of there so you don't get corrosion and moisture going back up through your pipe into the engine damaging that. So that's number one. And the second thing that I really recommend is going to be pop the hood because there's always water gonna be in your engine compartment. It's unavoidable. You know, this isn't a sit down jet ski. You're gonna be getting wet, tipping over, going through waves. So at the bare minimum, what I can do is I take the hood lash, you know, so if it's on, I'll get home, put it in my garage, pop the hood latch. At very minimum, I'll lift it up and put the latch under the hood so you have air getting in there. If you leave this hood on overnight and you come back up the next morning and you didn't do this and you pop this hood off, there is going to be tons of condensation all over the top of the hood. Your whole engine's gonna be covered in water drops and all of that. And keeping all that moisture sealed in it's gonna corrode everything out. You're, it's not gonna last long. It's most certainly not going to look pretty for very long. If you have a really nice looking engine compartment, it will not look nice like that for long. So I highly recommend popping the hood. In some cases, I'll just take it off, leave it off for a couple days in my garage. And if for some reason you have a decent amount of standing water in the engine bay, what I like to do is get that water out. So, you know, you can use your electric bilge if you have one, if you don't, there's a couple options. You can take a shop vac and pull the filter off. Use your shop vac to suck it out. Or some people like to do those super soakers that are like a plunger type and basically just use it as a plunger. Um, people can use towels or a turkey baster. 
that'd be a little slow, but there's, there's a plenty of different ways to get it out. But I like taking the water out, especially if it is up to the engine where the front flywheel case is, because if your seal's not in great shape, it's gonna rust out your flywheel, which is a whole nother issue, but it's better to be safe than sorry. So those are the two big things that I always do after riding. If you, you know, live in a place where it gets really cold, like up north, Midwest, something like that, you'll probably want to winterize in, in, the, in the winter. And winterizing on, on a jet ski like this, all you need to do is just fog it, put some fogging oil in it. Or, you know, even here, we're in California where I ride nine months of the year. But it's not a bad idea to put some oil in your, down your carbs and down your spark plug holes and crank it over a little bit if you know you won't be riding for a long time. But in most cases, that's not really necessary. Um, but personal preference there, you know. And obviously, if you want to give it a good wipe down, that's not a bad idea either. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Uh, my freestyle ski, I'm pretty meticulous taking care of that one. On the cruiser here, I try and have fun and not get too caught up in making it look gorgeous. So those are the main tips I have for someone if you're just buying your first stand-up jet ski, um, your friend's going to let you borrow their stand-up jet ski and go out for a weekend or a ride. Or third would be is if you have someone who invited you out to go ride with them and you want to show up but you don't want to look like a total clown, you know, watching a video like this with a couple tips and tricks it's gonna give you a good start where you can watch it once, maybe watch it twice and kind of have fundamental ideas because what I see a lot when I'm teaching people is there's a few people around. There's a group and a lot of them have ridden before and everyone's gonna be telling you all these different things at once and it's so overwhelming to take in 10, 15 different tips all at the same time. So my purpose for this video was to basically make it to where someone can watch this then next day go out and ride and then they have in the back of their head at least hey there's some fundamental ideas that i know going into this i know how the controls work i know basically what to do and what to avoid and one thing i wanted to actually didn't touch on previously but this should go without saying for anyone who has been in the water um, and been been on boats and whatnot but Obviously, when you're learning, stay as far away from other riders as you possibly can. Stay way away from the shore. When you're riding, you when you're learning, point yourself out towards the middle of the lake. Don't ride towards the shore. Don't ride parallel to the shore, close to it. Stay away from other people. Obviously, you're not going to be in control of this thing when you first get on and you're new. So you want to be out by yourself. And if people are crowding you and coming around you more than you're comfortable with, just pull back in the shore wait for them to go away and then go back out and try again because having people crowding you buzzing by you that's just going to make you more stressed and it's going to slow down your learning curve right there so i hope you enjoyed this little tutorial here and you know i plan to do some more i'm going to actually go out to the water uh, bring out the camera and kind of do some other tri tricks and tips i might even go into some freestyle stuff just basic wave jumping a lot of people I watch hopping on super jets and even sit downs, all types of jet skis and personal watercraft. The fundamental way that they're trying to hit waves and boat wakes and make a setup wake is just totally off. So you know, I want to make some videos like that and teach people, hey, how do I hit a wave and actually jump, right? And a lot of it has to do with timing, but I'd love to go over that in another video and then even start going into some uh, introduction to freestyle and teaching some fun tricks that you can do on a super jet without spending, you know, twenty to forty thousand dollars on the baddest freestyle jet ski out there. And there's a lot of fun to be had on these. I was doing freestyle on super jets over ten years before I even got into the backflip, real hardcore freestyle jet skis. So there's so much you can do, so much to learn, so much fun you can have on a jet ski that is just a basically standard with some minor modifications. You don't have to go out and buy the baddest thing out there. If you want to go do a backflip on flat water, this is not your setup right here. You're going to have to spend the money. But there's so many other cool things you can do that's not a backflip. I mean, you can take a jet ski like this and do a barrel roll off of your own wake, and that's pretty cool too. But the length of this, it's just too long. There's no way you're doing a flip on this without major power, and they're too heavy. It doesn't have trim, and so many people ask, what do I need to do to make a backflip? Don't waste your time, it's not worth it. 
you can spend your time doing so many other cool things and if a backflip really is what you want to do just get a freestyle hole it's it's a better way to go versus trying to put so much money into something that really is never made for that job another thing to consider when it comes to jet skis is there is no do-it-all jet ski if you want something that's gonna bust out a flat water backflip but you're gonna cruise around on the lake and it's gonna be an awesome buoy chasing jet ski that's not re reality there are some that can do both but you're never gonna have something that's excellent at both so keep that in mind you know you really kinda have to be purposeful about what you do and that's why I have two I have this one that I go out and I cruise around with my friends go out in the sloughs maybe hit a couple buoys do some old school freestyle and then I have my full-blown competition pro freestyle jet ski over there that it sits on a stand, I go out and I do my routines and I come back in and that's it. That's what it's built for. It does extremely well, but that's all it does. So, you know, you can get something like a Richter Edge, which can do both technically, but it's not going to do it either one great. That's going to be more of a cruise around the lake jet ski that you can you know do a backflip off of a big yacht wake or something and if you have enough power it probably will backflip on flat water off of your own setup wake but it's not gonna be fun or easy so I just wanted to share that too because I feel like a lot of people have misconceptions about you know what these jet skis are capable of and what you can do on them so you know I'm, I'm on this one cruising around in the old super jet here all the time and people on the shore are yelling, do a backflip! And you just look at them like, okay, right? I mean, it, it, they don't, they have no idea. So anyway, give me a follow. I'm gonna keep making content like this uh, relating to jet skis, boats, camping, trailers, trucks. I love outdoors. Um, actually a ex-mechanic, so I'm a master certified mechanic. So I love getting into technical details. I build my own stuff done extension, extensive work to both of these and I just like sharing knowledge and keeping the stoke alive. I love sharing stand-ups with people and get the more people I can get on the water the better so have fun out there and let me know how it goes.